Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we are continuing our beginner herbalism class series and I will just be running through some of the equipment that I feel is necessary to begin learning herbalism and some that I feel will be necessary later on but which isn't urgent to acquire. And I'll be going into a little bit on why I think that an herbalist needs some of this but some of it's pretty self-explanatory. So to start with, if you are going to be wild crafting or gardening or in any way foraging or collecting your own herbs, you will of course need the equipment for that. Starting of course with a thorough education to make sure that you are collecting what you think you're collecting and you have properly identified all of your plant material. If you don't intend to wild craft, forage, collect your own, um, or garden, uh, then this equipment is something that you can just leave off of your list for now. But that includes some kind of a plant identification guide, just so that you can double check yourself. A set of good clippers that you keep rust-free and clean and sharp. Remember that if you make dull cuts to a plant, that can actually introduce harmful bacteria and fungi into the plant's system. So be kind to the plants you harvest from and make sure that your clippers are nice and sharp. You're going to want to have some kind of a collection bag and you're going to want to clean that between various things that you harvest so that there isn't cross-contamination of one plant to another. You will also likely need a set of gloves, especially if you are going to be harvesting photosensitizing herbs, such as rutagraviolans, or if you are going to be harvesting from things that have thorns. Um, I particularly like the rose pruning style, which tends to have goat or pig skin, um, palms, and then thicker cowhide up the arms but you don't have to use that style if it doesn't work for you, either because you just don't like it, or if you have some kind of ethical protest to the use of animal skin. You will also, of course, for any collecting days, need a good sun hat, um, a nice water bottle, uh, salty snacks, and a good sunscreen. But that's kind of getting into more of the equipment for wild crafting and less of the equipment for herbalism. So I'm going to move on. You will need drying equipment. This includes wire racks and cookie sheets, parchment paper or wax paper, eventually potentially window screens or air filters and a box fan, um, and the equipment to tie the window screens or air filters to the box fan, um, which you can use uh, bungee cords for if you're going to be doing a particular drawing style. If you're not going to be doing that drawing style, then those will be unnecessary. You will need drying baskets, um, which tend to be wide and quite shallow. Uh, and you do want to periodically check those for any kind of mildew or mold that accumulates during the drying process. You may want a clothesline and twine and pins. Are they called pins? They're called clothes pins, okay. yeah? Okay. Um, and you may either want a baker or artist rack for drying multiple things on your screens. Um, they're very, very handy, but they tend to be a little expensive. So that's something that you could get if you find that herbalism is something you really are interested in and you want to start doing more and more and more of it. If you're doing large scale drawing, that's when I would say you might want to have one of those. Sterilizing equipment. You need a dishwasher with a sanitized setting or a deep and wide pot capable of fitting everything that you are sterilizing inside of it. You will need a very, very strong alcohol, something on the order of 91% isopropyl alcohol or something like Everclear that is exceedingly high proof, and you will need bleach. Uh, additionally, you'll need water, and for some processes, that may end up being distilled water. It depends on um, kind of what herbalism you get into, how careful you need to be um, with cross-contamination, and then you might be using distilled water and bleach to sterilize your equipment, which is something we'll get into 
later in this series. Canning and storage equipment. You may need canning jars, preferably wide mouth quarts, pints, and half pints with lids. Please remember that if you are pressure canning, the lids are the part that is not reusable. So lids is a continuous buying process. Lids are? So the accumulation of lids is a continuous accumulation. You have to keep buying them. Um, either a pressure canner or a canning pot. I do recommend a pressure canner if you are going to be canning things that don't have a high acid content um, in order to make sure that you don't have any bacterial or mold growth in what you are canning. Tongs designed for pulling cans out of boiling water. Sealing stoneware or ceramic fermenting and brewing pots freezer bags, and other storage containers. Ideally, reusable silicone that is rated to be able to boil it for sterilization. I've noticed that there's a cheaper silicone company that's selling their bags on like Amazon as reusable silicone bags, but then it says right on them that they are not able to be boiled. I would not use those ones. Spray bottles, ideally cobalt or dark brown glass. Um, it really does matter for certain things that you have protection from light. So I just go ahead and buy all of my glass in bulk as cobalt or dark brown rather than clear so that I never need to worry about whether something is sensitive to light. Storage jars, bottles, and canisters, all airtight. Screw top containers for salves or butters, ideally metal or they do make a non-porous, non-BPE plastic um, that is made from recycled materials, which you can get from free end container and I tend to like that as well. You may need some power tools. What do I mean by power tools? You may decide that you want a food processor because boy do they make so many things so much easier. I want to pause here and note, however, that if you are going to be making things with beeswax and you are going to be buying your beeswax the cheapest way you can, which is these giant bricks of unprocessed beeswax instead of the more expensive pearled beeswax, then you are probably going to want a dedicated food processor just for processing the beeswax because it is kind of a nightmare to get out of a food processor, so I just tend to buy one at like a thrift store and just have it be dedicated to beeswax until the beeswax kills it. A blender, an immersion blender, a spice grinder, um, and here I'm going to pause and say that uh, you really should have a dedicated spice grinder for herbalism that is not the one that you grind your coffee beans in every morning. Um, a coffee pot, you may also want a percolator. Again, it depends on how advanced you're getting with everything that you do with your herbalism. Um, you may want to get a slow cooker. Again, it depends on what you're going to be doing, but for things that you want to keep going low and slow for 10, 12 hours, slow cookers are amazing because you can just set the temperature, set the time, and walk away and get on with your day. Um, my favorite slow cooker is actually one that has three small sections so that I can have three things going at once, but um, they are small amounts. If you want to make really big batches, then that's probably not for you. A food dehydrator is useful, but not necessary. You will also need hot water infusion equipment. This includes a tea kettle with temperature settings or a regular tea kettle and an instant read thermometer because there are herbs that lose their volatile components if they are overheated. Um, so making sure that you have your temperature correct, pretty important. Uh, tea ball, tea strainers with lids, and potentially even a French press. I find them very useful, but you may not. Knives and blades. Several paring knives of varying size and types, I at least recommend that you have one of the slightly curved paring knives and one of the straight paring knives. At least two peelers, one narrow and one wide, unless you are very good with your paring knives. I don't currently own a peeler, 
Um, sometimes I regret that because then I have to be the one to do it because I'm the one who's experienced with using a paring knife for everything. Um, so I should probably get peelers at some point. A good chopping knife. Kitchen shears. A sharpening stone, or you're gonna have to pay to have your equipment sharpened. And various graters. At least a box grater and a microplane. You will need various kinds of mortars and pestles. I recommend at least two. One that is very, very rough, like made of lava stone or similar material, and one that is smooth, made of soapstone or marble or similar material. Um, they are used for slightly different things and they make slightly different things, um, which is super clear, but I recommend at least those two kinds. Now, I will say that you can often find these at thrift stores, at charity shops. Um, I found them at, uh, I found them all over and they're just something I tend to pick up when I find them inexpensively so that I can use them as needed. Lab grade glassware. Liquid measuring cups, ideally at least one small and one very large. So many bowls of varying sizes. Stirring rods, non-reactive glassware really is best. Large vessels for brewing if you intend to make things like kombucha. Glass cooking vessels, at least one deep saucepan and one baking dish. And glass droppers. I'm gonna pause here and note that there's been something very frustrating happen in the last, like within my lifetime, which is that Pyrex in the United States changed the formula for their lab grade glassware that they sell in the United States. And it is no longer as temperature proof Pyrex, to- Pyrex commercially available cooking glass. Yes, Pyrex commercially available cooking glass um, is no longer able to go through extreme temperature changes like it used to be able to. So I buy vintage Pyrex whenever possible, or I buy it from the UK where it is still made the way it used to be. Right, um, you can also, uh, if you don't wanna go through Pyrex, um, or if you do wanna use Pyrex, but you wanna make sure that you're getting the good stuff, you can go through um, a company that specifically supplies lab equipment, um, and then you should be pretty good. Stainless steel equipment, measuring cups and spoons, fine mesh sieves of various sizes, colanders of various sizes, mixing bowls of various sizes, and several pots and pans. You are going to want at least one deep saucepan that is metal and one deep saucepan that is glass. Ceramic equipment. One non-stick ceramic pan. I do not use non-stick that is, um, I don't remember the Teflon, is that right? I do not use Teflon. Um, there's all kinds of research about the dangers of Teflon once it starts to be scraped. Uh, and now they make these amazing ceramic non-stick pans, so I just use those. There are times when you are going to want something to go for a very long time, low and slow, in the oven, and having a non-stick pan is just so, so, so helpful. Wood equipment. Wood stirring rods, wooden spoons and spatulas, um, and a solid rolling pin. Your solid rolling pin can also be made of something like marble or soapstone, mine is marble, but I put it on wood because those tend to be less expensive. Miscellaneous, a scale, preferably digital, preferably high precision. I know that they are expensive, but a digital high precision scale is so essential. Basking tape. Waterproof pens that write on masking tape. You want it to be waterproof. You really, really, really want your labels to be waterproof. Cheesecloth or other appropriate fa fabric for filtering liquids. And here I'm gonna pause and note that what you can buy at your average like Kroger or Smith's that they call cheesecloth is not cheesecloth. I don't know what that horrible stuff is, but that's not cheesecloth. Um, 
I mean like real cheesecloth. You can also use uh, muslin um, or uh, unbleached fine quality cotton, but something to strain things through and also something where you can stretch it across the lid and tie it in place and it acts as a filter. Cloth towels, lots and lots and lots of them. So much kitchen twine, just so much. You may want a citrus juicer or reamer. I don't have one. Um, I keep saying I want to get one because of how often I squeeze citrus and go, oh my gosh, my hands are covered in cuts. Um, but if you want to keep your hands out of everything that you're doing and you want to have equipment between you and everything that you're doing, um, you have the option of either wearing gloves or using something like a citrus juicer or reamer. Um, a ginger juicer, again, uh, I didn't really think it was necessary and then my apprentice bought one and honestly it's been really handy. So, silicon spatulas rated to over 500 degrees Fahrenheit. This becomes more important if you're going to be making things like lozenges or hard candies um, using your herbalism techniques, like if you're going to make whorehound drops or ginger drops or something, then you're going to want silicone tools rated to over 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Cutting boards, and I mean like non-porous cutting boards. Funnels of various sizes, you're going to want sizes small enough to fit into um, your oil bottles and big enough to work with your wide mouth jars. Uh, rubber bands of various sizes, or you can get really, really good at tying twine, um, which is what we do because rubber bands are stolen by our cats and that's really unsafe. Uh, let's see, corks that fit into your storage bottles. A really good can opener is worth its weight in gold. A good corkscrew is also worth its weight in gold. A cast iron skillet, rags for cleaning, and I know this came up with the, um, the tea kettle thing, but really you want a really good thermometer. Um, an excellent thermometer runs about $100, but if you are going to be making anything that involves candying or anything that involves precise uh, temperature shifts like tempering, then you are going to want a really good digital instant read thermometer. Some things that are way more expensive, but potentially worth it once you are into the intermediate or advanced stage of herbalism. A glass still for distillation of essential oils and hydrosols. I cannot even tell you how much cheaper it is for me to make my own hydrosols than to buy them even with a wholesaler's license from some of the suppliers online. Um, it's cheaper, it's fresher, I know I'm getting exactly what I'm paying for, so they're expensive, but if you are going to be going into like full-scale production, selling at farmer's markets, selling at a little shop or something, then having your own is worth it. A copper still for alcohol distillations, um, which of course you would not be selling as, um, for consumption. for consumption as alcohol, but rather for consumption as medicine. Uh, well, actually, you can't even call it medicine. You would be selling for the purposes of herbalism, traditional herbalism. <laughs> well, you can distill your own alcohol to use as a solvent for creating herbal remedies. Yes, you can distill your own alcohol to use as a solvent for creating your own herbal remedies. And if you happen to have a thumper, then you can actually make pre-herbalized alcohols, for lack of a better way of referring to that. Um, and you may want to have a wood-burning stove and a drying rack that fits around the wood-burning stove if you live in a really damp environment like I do. <laughs> uh, it's something to consider, or a fireplace that you can dry things in front of. Um, either works. All right, that's the equipment list. Uh, let me know if there is anything that you feel I missed on here. I'm sure that there is. I'm absolutely positively certain that there is stuff that belongs on here that didn't make it on here. Um, but that's what I could think of and um, what I think is a good place to start. By all means, don't buy all of this at once. Um, seriously, don't take a six-week herbalism course and then go, oh, I need a thousand dollars worth of equipment and go buy it. 
Uh, take your time, find things as you need them or as you find them discounted um, and accumulate gradually. Uh, you can't use all of this at once anyway. All right, have a great day. Be safe out there. Just occurred to me to say that I did put some links down below uh, to where you could buy some of this. Um, I didn't get like paid to promote anybody's products or companies, so just keep that in mind. This is not a sponsored thing. Um, and please don't come yell at me if you don't particularly like my individual recommendations. Use whatever works for you. Have a great day.